Did you know that the Batman was not originally going to be the Batman that is currently playing in theatres? Of course you did. If you're like me, you've been following this film's development since 2015. But if you didn't, don't worry, that's why I'm making this video. So I thought this was a good time to go over what the Batman was originally intended to be. Now, the Batman was officially greenlit in 2015, with the current Batman slash Bruce Wayne at the time, Ben Affleck, set to direct and star in his first solo outing. Wait a minute, wasn't Ben Affleck Batman in the DCEU and this film wasn't set in the DCEU? Correct! The original intention of the film was to continue the story of Affleck's Batman post-Justice League, the one we saw in 2017. Jeff Johns was to co-write the script along with Ben Affleck too, keeping in line with the original DCEU continuity, or as it was officially named, The Worlds of DC. Now, even with no official script released over the years, it has been revealed what Affleck's first draft entailed, and to be honest, it sounded pretty good. Affleck and Johns finished the first draft in March 2016, set after the events of Batman v Superman and Justice League. The script told an original story, inspired by the comic book elements, an approach that Affleck compared to director Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman story, with specific influence from the comics Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth, and Nightfall, as well as the video game Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, if you're like me and loved the Arkham games, you'll be glad to know or upset to know that the film was going to take place inside Arkham Asylum. Cinematographer Robert Richardson, who was attached early in development, confirmed this. It would have featured Slade Wilson slash Deathstroke, played by Joe Manganiello, who we saw at the end of both the original and Snyder Cut of Justice League approaching Lex Luthor, orchestrating a breakout at Arkham to tie Batman and make him vulnerable, before fighting him in the streets of Gotham during the climax. Batgirl was planned to appear and help Batman, Jeff Johns said the film would also explore the death of Robin, which was hinted at in Batman v Superman. But also, going back to the Snyder Cut, the original mid credit scene in Justice League had Deathstroke finding out from Lex Luthor that Batman is in fact Bruce Wayne. His name is Bruce Wayne. And with this information, Deathstroke would very much make Bruce's life hell, killing and torturing the ones he loves to drive him out. Manganiello explained recently in an interview that Deathstroke believed Batman was responsible for his son's death and was depicted as systematically dismantling Batman's life and killing those close to him. In terms of the look of the film, concept art for Affleck's suit has just recently been revealed, designed by Keith Christensen. It's very keeping in style with the Injustice video games, but also looks a little bit similar to Robert Pattinson's suit from The Batman. Even the bloody symbol is similar, mate. But this could very much be a pre-Batman v Superman suit, showing Affleck's early years, which we'll get to in a bit. There was also a piece of concept art of Ben Affleck's Batman riding a floating motorbike? Interesting that this has not been carried over in the upcoming Flash movie, where we have seen Batman riding a motorbike with wheels. When is that film coming out, by the way? Feels like, feels like the new mutants. Now, even though the studio had started pre-production on this solo Batman film, after the critical reception to Batman v Superman, Warner Brothers started to re-evaluate its approach to the DC franchise. The Justice League post credit scene was altered in post-production to tease the Injustice League in a Justice League sequel instead of Deathstroke's role in the Batman. Shouldn't we have a league of our own? Because it was eventually announced in 2017, before Justice League's release, and that's right, I'm calling it that, Ben Affleck decided to step down as director and writer, but was still going to star and produce the film. Although originally saying he wanted to concentrate more on developing the character, he later admitted he didn't feel he had the script in the right place. Now, just going on speculation, it wouldn't surprise me if Warner Brothers read the original script, and based on Affleck's references to certain darker, grittier stories, decided to make a more lighter toned Batman film to please critics and general audiences. Obviously that doesn't match up with what's happened recently, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's reasons. But this, this is where the Batman we have all seen and I hope loved start to come to fruition. Affleck confirmed via Twitter in early 2017 that director Matt Reeves was to helm the project. Warner Brothers considered many, many directors like Ridley Scott, but Reeves was the top studio choice. Reeves was given the Ben Affleck script and didn't feel this was the right approach. Recently, during the Batman press junket in an interview with Esquire, Reeves had this to say about the original script. I won't try and do an impression by the way, no one could, no one could top this man. He said, I read a script that they had that was a totally valid take on the movie. It was very action driven, it was very deeply connected to the DCEU, with other major characters from other movies and other comics popping up. I just knew that when I read it, this particular script was not the way I'd want to do it. I said, look, 
I think I may be not the person for this. And I explained to them why I love this character. I told them that there have been so many great movies, but if I were to do this, I'd have to make it personal so that I understand what I was going to do with it so that I know where to put the camera, so that I know what to tell the actors, so that I know what the story should be. This take, I told them, pointing at the script, is a totally valid and exciting take. It is almost James Bondian, but it wasn't something that I quite related to. With Reeves now at the helm and taking over this production, he wrote a new script that shows Batman in his early days before the events of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Affleck was still heavily involved, making sure to still set the film in the DCEU. But as the scripting continued, Ben Affleck announced in 2018 he was leaving the project and also stepping down as the Cape Crusader for the big screen due to personal issues, which we won't go into here. In the same year, Reeves had completed the script for the film and gave it to Warner Brothers, which at this point, writers Matson Tomlin and Peter Craig did tweaks to the script. And now here we are. Production began in February 2020 with Robert Pattinson replacing Affleck as the Dark Knight. But this project was nowhere near completion production-wise, as the great COVID pandemic hit affecting not just this production, but all major productions across the world. Even though the film was still slated for a 2021 release with the COVID pandemic, this was to be pushed back even further and further until eventually landing its March 2022 release date. Production resumed late 2020 with COVID restrictions in place and completed filming in March 2021. And now, seven years since its announcement, the Batman is finally out in the world and doing its Batman thing and making lots of money, already crossing 400 million worldwide in its first week. But there is some good news for Affleck fans out there. Ben Affleck has gone on record saying The Flash will be his last appearance as the Cape Crusader as another actor is taking over in that role, Michael Keaton, who played Batman in Batman 89 and Batman Returns. But if rumours are to be believed, the door is open for Affleck to return. I guess we'll see.